here. Okay. Hello, hello everybody. How are we all doing? I kind of changed the setup um, in my room for the fact that before it didn't seem like I got a good amount of light coming in, um, but you know, now it's flourishing. Um, I kind of, yeah, I changed that the direction of the camera. Um, there's something else that I wanted to say. Oh, so for those who um, were planning on going on Facebook Live instead, um, unfortunately, that's not going to be an option for today. Uh, I accidentally uh, drained my battery out because I got really deep into an art project, um, but you'll see it later tonight. I'm happy to share it. It's super fun. Um, so just enjoy it from here in either Instagram or on the YouTube. And so since we're getting all set up and it looks like people are still joining on in um, for the time being in today's class, what we will need for props um, is either a block or some sort of pillow, just anything that you have that you can um, readily grab. And I always recommend a blanket for additional comfort in case that is the route that you would like to go as well as if you have a strap to go ahead and grab one. Um, I am using Jake's tie, so you can really use anything that you have. So if you have a tie at home, go in your closet, if you have a belt, just really anything that um, is long enough for your arm span. Like this is perfect for a shorty like me. Um, so yeah, go ahead and find one for yourself and we will start in just a minute. Alrighty. Nice. So in today's class, what we are going to be working with is we are going to be working um, on our core if you were here in the morning class, you will start to see some similarities um, in this class as well as in the next. Um, these are all just preparatory poses so that we can work on our core, abdominals, and all that good stuff. Uh, today, a couple things that we're going to be working on with the aspect of working with our lower body, specifically our core is we are going to learn how to do the Kapalabhati breath, as well as for our peak pose today, you're going to see um, two peak poses. One of them is being eagle pose and the other being crane slash crow. It depends if your arms are straight or bent. And no judgment, they're both poses, names for a reason. So to give you a quick demonstration before we go with our flow, um, the eagle pose is great for hip strengthening as well as it is great for um, chest opening. Um, sorry, it sounded like we got an alert on our phone. Um, so eagle pose, sorry. You're going to bring your arms up to a T. It's really great for arm opening, specifically through the shoulders. And whatever the limb, the arm is on bottom, which my left is on the bottom, the, that is going to be the same leg that's going to go on top. And so here we find core engagement. We find engagement through the hips, lifting up through the chest here, and then coming down into a squat. So this is one of our tape poses. And then another peak pose is the crow or crane, depending on if your arms are straight or if you're bent. And this is another great um, core pose as well. And what crow essentially looks like, it's a core and arm balance pose, is either having your arms straight or having them bent. Um, in teaching, having the knees behind the triceps, um, but it, it can be... a a bit uncomfortable for some of us. So having it, your knee is onto the outside to come into crow will also work. So really just anything um, that works for you. 
Okay. All right, and then we're back. Okay, cool. So we can go ahead, if you got your props, you go ahead and find yourself then at a comfortable seated position. And as we are here in this comfortable seated position, having your spine nice and tall, having a very minimal tailbone tuck, we can start with the engagement in the core here by starting to hug in into the lower part of our belly. And as we kind of tighten up here just a little bit, nothing too rock solid, find that little intention and find a little lift through your chest. And we don't want to lift too high where we're arching through the lower spine. We actually want to find ourselves being um, pretty narrow and straight uh, as much as we can, getting the most natural curve and not so much in the back bend. Good. So feeling nice and strong already into the stomach. As we lift through the chest, inhale, bring your shoulders all the way up to your ears. And as you exhale, we're going to rotate them back and bring them into the socket, almost as if they're sandbags up on our shoulders and we're feeling strong in between our shoulder blades. And having that engagement in the center of the chest, up and lifted. Good. Actively bringing the knees down towards the ground and the back of the head towards the ceiling where the neck is connected. Getting the most space in this seated position or posture. And start to take three normal breaths, inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the nose. Really utilizing your belly to breathe. So intensely as we inhale, bringing the belly up, allowing your Buddha belly to shine. And then as we exhale, bring it in and then up inside your navel, almost like you're trying to engage the core. So we're working with diaphragm breathing here. Inhale through the stomach. And exhale to the stomach, a little intention rising up. And take one more strong stomach breath. Nice. And you can navigate your right hand onto your stomach. And maybe you could take the left hand behind your spine just to make sure that we're nice and straight and that we're lifted through the chest here. And you're also more than welcome to allow your left hand to be free, but most importantly, keeping your right hand onto your stomach. So working with the Kalabhati breath. Uh, what the Kalabhati breath is, is um, it's um, kapal meaning uh, skull and then uh, the bhati meaning shiny. And so basically it is not only a mental cleanse, but it's also called the fire breath. And it's called the fire breath um, for the fact that with this breath, it energizes your nervous system. You may start to feel warm throughout your forehead area, skull shining. So not only is it a physical cleanser, mental cleanser too, and then also it helps with your metabolism, uh, readling it so that, you know, it can help with weight loss. But most importantly, what we're using this breath for in a more spiritual level is to be able to kind of speed things up in here so that we can slow things down up in here. So if you have um, any uh, high blood pressure, any heart issues, um, if you are wheezing at this time, because some of us may be sick, um, I would either stick to 10 counts of this breath or maybe not do it at all. But I'll give you a quick example on why it's important um, for those who do have health issues um, regarding your heart is that it's a fast paced breath and it's very energetic and it involves a lot of your diaphragm um, to be able to complete this prana. So with this pranayama, as we stand up tall with our chest, I'm gonna do a quick example. We're going to inhale through the nose and we're gonna exhale through, through the nose 20 times, making the breath nice and short. And don't worry about inhaling because when you exhale, since you're using your diaphragm, it automatically sends um, the air back in, so automatically inhales. 
So a quick example, inhale through the nose. Exhale 20 times. Deep inhale. And exhale, release. And so now we can all do, do it together so that we can start our practice. So again, having that engagement very minimal into the core so that we can release that breath. Inhaling through the nose and count to 20. Inhale. And exhale, release. And you can already start to feel a little bit of Zen action going on in um, your mental state. I definitely am. It's one of my favorite breaths. So we're going to use this breath in a lot of our asanas today so that we can challenge ourselves staying in our core dominant asanas, as well as just being able to take control of our overall self and our mental state. Um, so that, you know, we can relieve some anxiety and all that good stuff that pranayama does. And so here you can go ahead and close your eyes, chest up tall. We set an intention for your practice today. Specifically, maybe inviting an attention that you would like to see being ignited. Like if you would like more of your creative side to come alive if you are thinking about making an awesome dinner after this class, maybe, you know, thinking about the awesome ingredients that you're going to put into it. Just really anything to build that fire, that creativity, and that drive and passion to get yourself motivated after class. And here you go ahead, take your palms up to the sides and inhale, rise, bringing your arms up towards the ceiling. Good, and palms together, Anjali Mudra, exhale to the heart center. And from here, you go ahead and bring that intention, intention to attention into this practice. Good. Bringing your arms out wide again, inhale, rise, arms up towards the ceiling. Flipping the palms down, exhale, lower the hands to the ground, keeping the chest lifted and your shoulders engaged. Inhale, move it from the chest to the arm and the hand towards the ceiling. And then put the palms down, exhale, release. Inhale, rise, both arms towards the ceiling. And we're going to keep the left hand risen and we're going to lower the right palm. And then as we bring the left arm towards the ceiling, chest to fall, we're going to inhale, start to laterally stretch over towards the right side, placing your hand on your right hand onto the mat, curving through the side body, lifting up through the chest, maybe taking the left arm towards the back of the room. Good. Inhale, rise, both arms towards the ceiling, and then exhale, release, right hand down, left hand down, inhale, rise, right arm, going over towards the left side. We want to make sure that we have just as much space into the left side of our body as we do onto the right, so we're not crunching, but we're extending and stretching. Good. And inhale, rise, both arms towards the ceiling, and then lower the right hand again, and inhale, rise with the left, and back over to the right side. Good. And allowing your breath to guide you, inhaling, we find length, and exhale, find more depth into your asana, whether that's your mental state or your physical. Good. Inhale, rise, both arms. And then exhale, release the left, and inhale, stretch over towards the left side, create that space, create that length, root through the right knee. Good. Inhale, rise, and then exhale, release. Good. Go ahead and roll out your shoulders here for a couple breaths. And as we find this lift in through the chest, you can go ahead and take your arms back up to the T, and we're going to interlace our hands and place them behind our head. Our elbows are going to be pointed out to the side. Our chest is lifted, and our core is engaged. Good. We want to make sure that we find this lift through the crown at the same time, very minimally pressing the head into the hands, at the same time the hand into the heads and the elbows going outwards. Well, this is a great arm opener and a... Great way to lengthen out through the spine, engaging the core. Good. Let's up through the chest and inhale. Start to bend the right elbow towards the ground. Good. 
And then inhale, rise. Exhale, release. Left elbow towards the ground. Go ahead, keeping the chest lifted. Right knee rooted. Good. Rising back up. Inhale, taking the right arm down again. Two more breaths. Go ahead, really lengthen up through the spine. And exhale, release. Heart center. And inhale, bringing the left elbow down. Keeping the elbows away. Uh, then exhale, come back to the center. And as we stand here and find the center, keeping your elbows out to the sides, lifting up through the chest, we want to find a little bit of engagement right in between the scapulas and the shoulder blades. And lifting up through the chest. Feeling the strength of our whole entire back being nice and active and strong, supporting our upper body. We're going to inhale, bring the elbows forward and chin to chest. Exhale. Inhale, rise, arms out to the sides. Exhale, forward, chin to chest. Inhale, fan off the elbows again, lift it through the chest. And then exhale, elbows forward, chin to chest. Good. And inhale, rise, both arms up towards the ceiling. And then exhale, release, side to side. Go ahead and shake out your arms. Do some shoulder rolls forward and then also back. And then from here, you can go ahead and find yourself at a tabletop position. And as you find yourself in a tabletop position, making sure that we have enough space in between our hands and our knees. Cat cow, inhale, rise into cow, chest is lifted, tailbone is lifted. Good. And then as you exhale the cat, round through the shoulders, bring your chin to chest. Good. Inhale, rise into cow. And exhale, chin to chest. Good. Curl the toes. Walk the hands forward two inches and inhale. Come into supportive plank, engaging at the core and lifting up through the shoulder blades. So we're not stacked down, that we're stacked up. Good. As we find that core engagement, we're going to go ahead and inhale. Lift up the knees about two inches off the ground. Engaging the quads, engaging the lower core. Good. Two more breaths here. Your final breath, inhale through the nose, exhale, release, bring the tailbone up in the downward facing dog, but keeping your knees generously bent so we can find more length in through the spine. Good, keeping the knees bent as if you're trying to put your stomach onto your thighs, chest is leading towards the ground. Good. And then from here, we're going to round through the shoulders, coming into full plank position, knees to the ground, chest to the ground, and chin. And then coming into cobra as we inhale, leading up at the chest. Good. Exhale, release. Coming into cobra again, but this time lift your hands off the mat. And as we inhale into cobra, we're going to inhale, lead through the crown, the chin, the chest, and engage the core. Shoulders are away from the ears. Good. We should see rocking. That means we're breathing. One more breath. And exhale, release. Curl the toes, inhale, rise, supported plank, and then bend the knees generously. Take your tailbone up, downward facing dog. Go ahead and pedal out your dog. And as you pedal out your dog, you can go ahead and create more room in between your feet. So increase the, the width of your down dog so that we can send the chest more to the ground. Hands are onto the mat. Good. And then maybe pedal out one knee at a time, going side by side. It's a great way also to stretch in between your hips and your pelvic. Good. Nice. And then bringing your feet back into normal downward facing dog, taking our eye gaze forward, either hop, step, or walk into your Uttanasana, which is your forward fold. Good. And in this forward fold, we're going to create more space in between our feet again and kind of bend at the knees here. Clasp to our elbows, making our spine nice and soft. Good. And then pressing each foot into the ground to create a pendulum with our upper body. Good. So if you see here, I'm pressing one foot at a time, and it's allowing me to rock side to side. Yeah. Good. And so then from here, 
You can bring the feet back into a hip length apart. Hands onto the shins. Inhale, halfway lift. Think of a cow spine here. So chest is leaning forward, tailbone is back. Good. And then exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees, palms face up, and then inhale, rise all the way up into your high mountain. Good. And then palms together, exhale. Samasiki. Very minimal tailbone tuck. Start to engage at the core here, and then bring your arms up to the T. As you have your arms extended out side to side, find a lift through the chest, and we're going to inhale, twist our upper body to the right side, and then bring the right hip crease to the front of the room. Good, so we're getting a good spinal twist and squaring at the hips. Inhale, rise, arms up into high mountain. Exhale, active T, tailbone tuck. Inhale, start to move your stomach towards the left side, then your rib cage and chest. And then take the left hips forward. Good. Two more breaths. And then inhale, rise, arms up towards the ceiling. Maybe a little bit of a back bend here. Good. Then exhale, release, hands to the side. Find a little bit of a chest opener. You take your hands and clamshell them behind our spine here. And as we do that, we're going to go ahead and rotate the shoulders to straighten out through our arms, creating the Kali Mudra right over here, the finger gun. Nice, burning, energetic mudra. And then so taking the fingertips back, inhale, rise through the chest. Good. And then exhale, we're going to hinge up the hips. Torso forward to the front of the mat. Good. Forward fold while the arms are up towards the ceiling or maybe towards the back of the room, whatever your range is here today. But if you start to feel tight and you feel pinching, just decrease the fold a little bit and see if you can lift your arms up just a little higher. You don't want to feel pinching or cramping because that means that it's becoming forceful and that's not good. Awesome. Take one more breath. Engage through the core and inhale, rise to the power of your core. And then release the arms, inhaling into high mountain. Good. And then arms are forward. Spread your feet about hip length apart and start to engage with the core and take your tailbone back, coming into chair pose. And as we're here into chair pose, we want to make sure that our knees are not over our toes. So if they are over, bring it back. Should be able to see the tops of our toes here. Taking two more breaths. Inhale, rise all the way up. High mountain back bend. And then exhale, release forward full. Walk yourself back into downward facing dog. And then round through the shoulders into plank. And then drop the knees to the ground. Good. Good little way to open up our spine a little bit to get us moving. So then as we're here in the tabletop position, we practice that uh, Kapal Bhakti breath during our grounding. But now we're going to practice it in this asana, just so that we have a more understanding as we hold ourselves up. So as we have our hands underneath our shoulders, uh, can we get to this nice long tabletop position? Either do the 20 fast breaths of the Kapal Bhati or um, do 10 if you have um, high blood pressure. So then from here, you go ahead, take a deep inhale, find that core engagement and puff up through the shoulders and then exhale. <laughs> Inhale through the nose. Sorry, come here, bud. And then exhale, release. Sorry. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Okay. Come here. I think it was just the wind. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. He's a good protector. Good. And we're going to do it one more time. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, release 20 or 10 times. Inhale, and then exhale, release. 
good. And you guys will probably start to feel um, a little bit zen or light, um, a little bit into the head, but definitely starting to feel warm throughout the body. So we are going to use that breath in specific asanas to challenge ourselves a little bit. But then from here in this tabletop position, you can go ahead and extend your right leg out in the back, like you're stamping your foot in the back wall, and then bringing your right toes to the ground and just stretch out through that right ankle, stretch out through the hamstrings. Yeah, that's okay, buddy. And then inhale, rise, right leg extended, and then inhale, left arm extended forward. We want to make sure that we're engaging through the core and thing up through the shoulder so we're not just um, sinking into our sh shoulder socket. We want to be nice and supported, really stretching out through the back foot, keeping it nice and active. The left arm forward, nice and active. Good. Working with the breath. Call Bhakti breath here. Inhale through the nose. Exhale 20 or 10 times. It's inhale, and then exhale, release. Keeping the tabletop balanced, good. And then three times, inhale, knee to elbow, and then exhale, release. Inhale, knee to elbow, exhale, release. Good, inhale, knee to elbow. Hold it here for an additional breath. And then exhale, release. And go ahead and lower the left hand. Right toes are pointed towards the back of the room, and you're going to elevate the leg up towards the ceiling. Good, keeping it nice and engaged. You're going to take the arms a little about three inches forward here, engage through the core. Inhale, touch your nose to the mat. Good, and then inhale, push your right foot back up towards the ceiling, push up. Inhale, knee to nose. And then exhale, release. Go ahead and reset yourself. Any cat cows, any wrist therapies. Good. Anything that feels good for you. And you can always fold your mat underneath your knee or grab a blanket perhaps to uh, create some, some support. Good. And then once you are all reset here, you can then go ahead and stretch the left foot out towards the back. Boom. Good. Toes to the ground. We go through the chest, engaging the quad and the hands so that we can open up through the hamstrings. And then inhale, coming forward into that balanced tabletop, flex with the right foot, lift up through the chest and the shoulders, and inhale, bringing the right arm forward here. Kalabrakti breaths. Inhale through the nose, and release 20 times. Inhale, and exhale, release. Three breaths of inhaling knee to elbow and then exhale releasing your own pace your own breath good and then replacing your right hand onto the ground point your toe, left toes to the back of the room lift your left leg up as high as you can take your eye gaze forward and then inhale touch your nose to the mat engaging the core and then inhale push up and rise inhale knee to nose and then exhale, release. Go ahead through cat cows, maybe wrist therapy, anything to kind of reset yourself here. Good. And then as you feel reset here, we're going to go ahead and curl or take the arms forward, coming into a supported plank. So the feet are kind of together here, then the knees are together. Taking the hands um, a little bit further apart, maybe off of your sticky mat. Good. Off of your mat. And then you lift up through the chest to find that core engagement so that we're not collapsing into the shoulders. Good. And we're going to inhale, take the hips over to the left side, pressing your right hand into the ground. I gaze over the right shoulder. Good. Then exhale, release. Cat spine to the center. Inhale, cow spine. Hips to the right. And then pressing with your left hand into the ground. Good. Exhale, release. Cat spine to the center. One more time. Inhale, hips over to the left. Good. Exhale, center. Inhale, hips to the right. Good. Exhale, center. And then finding yourself back at that supportive plank, taking your arms back into place here. 
Good. Chest is forward. We're going to go ahead and curl the toes and inhale, rise into a full plank. As we're here to this full plank, pressing your hands into the mat, feel the thing up through the chest, through the shoulders, nice and strong into your plank here, really stretching out through the back ankles. From here, we're going to do the Kalabati breath. We're going to do it two times. So find the core engagement, deep inhale through the nose, release 20 times. Deep inhale, exhale, release. One more time. Deep inhale through the nose, 20 times. Deep inhale, exhale, release, downward facing dog. Good job, you guys. Bring your chest down, pedal off through the knees, tailbone is up towards the ceiling. Good. And then we're going to bend at the knees generously. I gaze forward and either hop, step, or walk into Uttanasana, the forward fold. Good. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Palms out. Inhale, rise into a high mountain. Maybe a back bend here. Good. And then palms together into the heart center. And as we're here into the heart center, keeping our hips our feet hip length apart. Then I go ahead and send that tailbone back into that chair pose, keeping um, the prayer hands together here. Find that lift through the chest as we're taking that tailbone back. Good, and we really wanna press through the hands here to open up through the shoulders. And then we're going to twist to the right, but we're gonna keep our left elbow hovered. So as we find that lift here to the chest, we're going to inhale, take the left elbow towards the right thigh, but keep it hovered. I gaze over the right shoulder. Good. Find that core engagement to keep us here. Good. Inhale, rise into the center. And then on our next breath, we're going to inhale, take the right elbow towards the left thigh, but keeping it hovered, pressing the palms together. I gaze over the elbow. Two more breaths here. Good. Inhale, palms to the heart center, and then we're going to release the hands onto the knees. Good. And maybe creating more room in between the knees here so that we can um, create the goddess legs. So maybe pointing our toes up to the side will help us feel more balanced here. And speaking of balance, we want to find a level of buoyancy in this goddess position. So with that being said, finding that straight spine and bending up to, up to the knees, very slightly tucking in the tailbone. It's going to be nice and straight here, but we want to be able to find that buoyancy where we feel like we are supportive in our hips instead of just trying to hold ourselves up here. So if that means decreasing your bend, then go ahead and decrease it. Good. So as we take the hands to the knees, we're going to do a twist. By inhale, taking the left shoulder down and looking over the right shoulder. Find that core engagement, inhale, rise to the center, taking the right shoulder down and taking the eye gaze over the left shoulder. Good. One more time on each side, your own breath, your own pace. Good. And coming back into the center, we're going to find that core engagement. Still keeping the squat here. And just like we do in chair, take your arms forward. Inhale, rise with your arms. Good. And exhale, release. Hands towards the ground. Hinge at the hips. And then inhale, send the arms back up. You can even grab a block if this feels more concentrated for you. Good. And exhale, hip hinge, taking your arms down. Engage the core and inhale, rise through the chest up. Exhale, release, and then inhale, rise all the way up, five-pointed star. Good, and then shake the hips, shake the hips, because I bet that feels good right now. Whew. Reset it, reset it, get nice and groovy. Good. Wish I had music for us to groove to, but it, there's like some weird copyright issues, so whatever. I hope y'all are having fun with the music that you're playing at your house. Write down what you listen to. I, I want to know what you yoga to. Good. As we start to feel reset here, you go ahead, arms up, back bend, exhale, swan dive, hip hinge, hands to the mat, taking the left leg back. 
running lunge position. Making sure that the back thigh is lifted and that we're at a 90 degree with the front leg. Good. Creating space with the legs at the same time. Right hip crease comes back, left hip crease comes forward. Nice and square. Good. And we're just going to press the left foot into the ground, or the right foot into the ground, excuse me. Engage the core, and we're going to inhale, point the left toes up towards the ceiling, just meet the left foot into Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, and send the right leg back into the running lunge, engaging the core. Go really stretch out through the hips, root through the right heel, left foot forward. And then inhale, rise, right leg up, and to meet the left, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise halfway. Good. And then exhale, forward fold. We're going to go ahead and find ourselves back into that plank position. And as we're here into plank, we're going to go ahead and bring the feet to meet into the center. And we're going to inhale, bend the right knee, and bring it all the way to the right elbow. Engaging the core and staying here for a total of three breaths. Good. And inhale, take the right leg back. Engage the core. Bend the left knee and inhale, bring it to the left elbow. Three breaths. Good. And then bring the legs back. Good. And then here, inhale, bring the right knee to elbow. Exhale, release back. Inhale, left knee to left elbow. Bring it back. Good. And do this three more times on each side, keeping your core engaged and your torso into the same spot so that we're not flopping all over the place. We're getting a strong connection to our back. And after you do your three sets on each side, you go ahead, bend at the knees, child's pose, give your arms a little bit of a break. So if you need to find some cat cow spinal movements, that is a great alternative too. Just anything to reset your spine here. Good. And then coming back into that plank position, we're going to go ahead and inhale, take the right knee to the outside of the right elbow, and then place your right foot to the outside of the right hand. Good. So coming into this lizard variation and pointing the right toes and the knees towards the right side, keeping the left knee up. Good. We're just getting a little bit of an opening here into the right hip. So if you wanted to increase it, you could take the right hand to the right knee and take your eye gaze over the right shoulder, making sure that the left knee is lifted and that the thigh is lifted as well. Buoyancy into the core. We want to feel light. Nice. And then bring it back in. Good. And we can bring the right foot into the center. And we can drop the left knee in the top of the left foot. Squaring through the hips, finding that engagement. Buddy, it's just the wind. It's okay. We're going to engage, engage the core that's going to help us lift and rise with the arms. Anjane Asana. We're going to gain that good quad stretch into the back. Good. And exhale, release. Hands to the center. Go ahead, lift up through the left toes. Bring the right leg back. And then bringing it onto the left side this time. So shake out the hips if you need to. Shake it up, shake it out. Good. And then inhale, left knee to left elbow. For three breaths. Good. Then we're going to take the left foot to the outside of the left hand and just like we did on the opposite side, we're going to go ahead and just walk the left knee just a little bit towards the left side, point the toes out, opening up through the hips. And we're going to keep the right leg lifted here. And if you wanted to, you can connect your left hand to your left knee and very gently open up through the hip. You don't want to force and push, just an intention. Keeping the chest lifted. Good. Two more breaths. And then go ahead and walk your left foot back to the center. Drop the right knee in the top of the right foot. You're going to find that core engagement as we engage, is helping us rise. So you can go ahead, arms up into your full on Janayasana. Good. Chest is lifted. Arms are back. Two more breaths. Good. And then exhale, release. Hip hinge, hands to the mat. Lift up through the right knee. Bring in the left leg back. Go ahead, shake up through the hips. You know you want to. Good. 
And as you find that here, you go ahead, downward facing dog. If you wanted to go through a vinyasa flow, you're more than welcome to. Good. Let's go ahead and get some pedals in. So just a couple more breaths. Let's check in the time. Okay. We're good on time. Good. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and from downward facing dog, we're going to bend the knees generously, taking the eye gaze forward, hop stepping or walking into the Uttanasana forward fold. Find that inhale, halfway lift. Good. Exhale, forward fold. We're going to go ahead. Um, if you at this time have a pillow or block in front, you can go ahead and grab it. Good. We're going to press the hands onto the pillow here. And then spread our knees hip length apart, bend at the knees generously, coming into a yoga squat, engage the core. Good. And then we're going to inhale, rise, bringing the pillow up towards the ceiling. So like almost like Simba here. Got some Lion King action going. Good. Arms are forward, coming into a yoga squat, making sure that we see the knees. Good. Exhale, release, block to the ground. Inhale, rise, arms up. And then bring the block into the center and then inhale, twist the right elbow to the left thigh, pressing it onto the thigh this time. Eye gaze over the left shoulder. Good. Two more breaths. Inhale to the center and then exhale, bringing the elbow, the left elbow to the right thigh. Eye gaze over the right shoulder. Good. And then inhale, bringing the block forward. Inhale, Simba squat. Our block is risen. And then come out of your squat and shake it out here in the hips. Good. Now that we are nice and warmed up into the hips, we got some good arm action going on. You go ahead and start to explore a little bit of the ego pose. So with the ego pose, um, I, oh, I guess we don't need a prop here. We are totally cool where we're at. So we're going to go ahead and find some, a little bit of buoyancy to our practice to start. Good. So with this buoyancy and the sturdiness, we're going to come into a tree position. So feet are together, our core is engaged. We want to feel nice and strong through the chest, through the core, and through the back core. We want to keep our upper torso in place as much as we can here. So as we start to calibrate our energy, let's go ahead and take it all the way into the left side of the body. So our hip is not going to be sassy. It's going to be nice and sturdy. And as we engage through the feet, the tripod, big toe, pinky toe, the heel, to the calf, to the quad, to the core, we're going to go ahead and bend the right knee and then open it out to the side. So we have our knee open up to the side. You are more than welcome to place the sole of the foot onto the left shin on the side. If you wanted to, either underneath your knee or right above it. We don't want the foot directly onto the knee. That is our joint. It's what's supporting us. But what also helps support us is if we press our foot into the left thigh at the same time, we're pressing our thigh into the foot. Nice and strong. You can keep your hands into prayer hands for here to start. Good. And once you start to find that sense of balance here, we're going to go ahead and take three more breaths. Allowing yourself to kind of cool down just a little bit so we can keep that concentration here. And then the next breath, go ahead and take your arms out to the T. Good. And we're going to inhale, rise, bring the right knee forward and up in towards our chest. Very slight bend to the left knee. We're going to take the right foot over the left leg. Good. And then we're going to take our right arm underneath the left, and we're going to wrap our elbows together and press our hands together. Now, for some of us, um, we may not be able to press your palms together, so you're more than welcome to invite the back of your hands into place or you can take your hands onto your shoulders. As long as we're having some good action here into the elbows to open up through the shoulders, good. You're more than welcome to stay here for, for your eagle. 
If you wanted to ignite more of your core and get more into action, you can go ahead and come into the eagle squat. And if you want the full action of this eagle, you could take the bottom foot, or I should say the right foot, and you can either lift up the toes or you can even wrap your toes behind your calf. There's many different areas that you can explore here in your eagle. Good. So making sure that your chest is lifted, nice straight spine coming into that squat. We're gonna hug the knees in. We're hugging the elbows and the elbows are risen up towards our mouth here. Good, nice and strong. Two more breaths. And let's make it three. Three is a good number. Hugging at the elbows, hugging at the hips. Nice. Inhale, rise out of your ego. Unleash your legs, unleash the arms. Good. Go ahead and shake it out. Drop your shoulders. Good. This is the easier class in the next. So take some good amount of breaks here. And then we're just going to do the same, but on the opposite end. So this time we're going to transfer all this energy into our right side of the body. Our hip is not sassy. We're nice and strong, connected from our toes, calf, quad, core, and even through our chest and shoulders away from our ears, back and away. Left knee is opened out to the side. And you, you know what to do from here in this tree pose. So you can go ahead and navigate how high you would like your foot, as long as it is not onto the knee joint, because that is not supportive. Good. So hip is in, palms to the heart center, just to make it a little easier for us, cooling down, being able to find this concentration. Good. And we're gonna stay here for Three more breaths. Good. And then we're going to slowly inhale, rise, left knee <laughs> up towards the ceiling, and then exhale to the outside of the right foot. My screen is slanted, so I feel like I have to catch myself through the screen. <laughs> That's funny. Good. Then you go ahead and take your arms up to the T. And since the left leg is on top, let's go ahead and wrap the left arm underneath. And again, either palms together, the back of the hands, or the shoulders. They are all great placements as long as we have our elbows nice and active. We got our hips nice and active. Either toes are lifted off to the ground or staying off to the ground, lifting up through the chest and coming into that eagle squat. Good. Rising up through the chest. Get a little bit deeper into the squat. Two more breaths. You got this. Nice. And inhale, engage the core. Rise out of your eagle. Release the legs. Release the arms. Go ahead and shake it out. Shake out the hips. Reset yourself here. Go ahead, reconnecting with your breath. As we start to find this reconnection with our breath, we can go ahead and explore the second feet pose. So from here, we're going to spread the feet about hip length apart, maybe even wider. We're gonna come into Malasana, which is yogi squat. So go ahead and join your hands together. Find a lift through the chest. Engage the glutes just a little bit. A little core engagement here. And then exhale, release, coming into yogi squat. Pressing the palms together and the knees into the elbows at the same time, the elbows away from the knees, lifting up through the chest. But, so we're having that nice straight spine as much as we can. Good. And then hands onto the floor and release. If you have a block nearby and crow, we're going to crow. Um, if it's difficult to get yourself into it, if you've practiced it before, you can utilize a block so that you can get a little bit of a lift through your feet so that um, you can elevate your core more so that you're able to go into the asana. So if you have blocks or books, what, whatever that has a good lift, you can place it behind your feet. And as you place it behind your feet, you can refine yourself back into your malasana position. Head. But this time we're going to keep the hands to the ground. 
Good. And to start here, we can kind of walk ourselves a little bit back and place our feet onto the block. Good. And we want to find a good lift into the hips. The hands, we want them nice and grounded, connected to the ground. The palms are nice and flat. And you can meet your knees either to the outside of the triceps or on top of the triceps. And as you find that here, you can do one foot at a time. Just to give yourself a little lift. Just one foot. And when you feel like you are strong and sturdy, you take both feet off of the block into your ground. Making sure that you breathe because if you hold your breath, you will couple out of that asana. So hands to the ground, we're having the hips nice and high, up towards the air, and it is okay if we can't get both feet off the ground. Find that core engagement. And just explore this for three, three more breaths, because some of us might be toppling all over the place. Some of us are probably looking like they belong in yoga journal. So three more breaths of your own exploration. Whew. And now that we're done exploring that, you go ahead and find yourself out of your crow, find yourself on your booty. Oh, some sweet lovings here. Go ahead and just kind of windshield wipe the legs back and forth. So you start to find this windshield wipe back and forth. We can go ahead and find ourselves into the center of the mat and onto our spine. Hugging the knees in, rocking side to side, a little bit more massage here. Good. Placing the feet onto the ground and then placing the feet onto one another. We're gonna open up our knees into uh, butterfly pose, Supta Padakanasana, so butterfly onto the spine. I'm gonna take both of our hands onto our stomach Kapal Bhakti breath here, fire breath here. Take a deep inhale through the nose. And then 20 exhales. Inhale. And exhale, release. Go ahead, lift up in the knees, walk the feet to the outside of the mats, and inhale, drop the knees into the center. Go ahead and take a, about three breaths here. We're internally rotating our hips since the butterfly was externally rotated. Do a great cooling pose for working with our hips and our lower core today. And we can take the arms out to the T and keep the feet um, far apart. So they should be um, probably off of your mat to the best of your ability. We're going to go ahead and inhale, take the knees over to the right side. And you're more than welcome to place the right foot on top of the left thigh. And if this is too much space for us today, then that's okay. You can just have your knees stacked and just place it to the side. That's totally cool. It's, it's your mat. It's your rules. Taking three more cooling breaths here. Engage the core, inhale, bring the knees up. And then exhale, release, bringing the knees over to the left side. I use over the right. And then on the next breath, you can go ahead and take your knees back into the center. Good. And then from here, we're going to place our hands up into that crow pose position. So like we did with our hands onto the ground, but except our forearms are going to be parallel to the mat and our hands are almost going to be up or backwards. And then we're going to inhale, lift up through our shins. Come here, buddy. Right over here. And up. And then as we're here, we're going to do just like a couple crunches here. We're going to inhale, press our fingertips to the floor and our feet to the floor. 
And then exhale, meet into the center, elbows and the knees, flexing through the feet. Good. Inhale, heels and fingers to touch the mat. Exhale in the center to meet. Good. I do this 10 more times, nice and slow. Good. Heels to the ground, and then knees and the elbows to touch into the center. And making sure that our lower spine stays onto the mat. Good. And then once you've done these your 10 times, the 10th time, meet your knees and elbows into the center. Then take your hands onto the outer edges of your feet and come into happy baby pose. And from here, we are coming to an end to our class. So you're more than welcome to stay here in your happy baby pose, rock side to side if you want to create movement, or taking your six final breaths, going into any stretches that you would like. So if you're craving a back bend, you're more than welcome to come into bridge. If you're looking for a shoulder stand that does still require some core engagement and workout here, you can go ahead and go into a shoulder stand club pose, maybe really anything to that you feel like you haven't gotten out of your practice or you just want more of, go ahead and invite that here for just a couple more breaths. Then we're going to inhale, rise, bringing the arms up above your head and point your toes to the front of the mat. I'm going to take a deep inhale through the nose, and then exhale, release. And you're more than welcome to place your arms wherever is comfortable. And just enjoying these next few moments here in your Shavasana. And then as you are lying here in your Shavasana, I picked a little poem from Thomas Lloyd Qualls, and it's from the Painted Oxen. That fire is the voice of the gods speaking in tongues. That fire is the liberator of water slipping the earthly bonds. Fire is the memory of store being released into the heavens. And that fire is the mother of the earth, born of desire. That fire is the seducer of wind, dancing in abandon for the beloved. And that fire is the illuminator, the protector, and the destroyer, and the giver of all life. So allowing the warmth of that fire breath bring that sensation here in Shavasana. And maybe starting to ignite that fire and that passion by wiggling out your fingers, your toes, your fingers and your wrists. It's really allowing the energy of today's practice to give you a new sense of awakening. Mm 
And then from here, you go ahead and inhale, rise, bringing your arms above your head and your knees into your chest. And letting it out with the cleansing sound. And you're more than welcome to bring your knees to either the left or right side and very gently make your way up into a seated position. And then finding your palms into the heart center, you go ahead and take a bow and take some gratitude for yourself for coming into today's class and wishing peace and health through the rest of your days. And namaste. All right. Well, thank you so much for attending tonight's class. Uh, you're more than welcome to stay for the next video. The next video, uh, we're still going to be working on some core today and all the call body breath. Um, I, as an instructor um, throughout my days, like to uh, keep the same in intention just to keep that passion going. And so you're more than welcome to stay for the next one. It will be a little bit more intense. Got some knee and massage time. Other than that, have a great night and let me know what tasty foods you're going to eat. All right, we'll see you. Oh, you are welcome, Mr. 20.